my son was over there helping people to come home and he serves his country to the greatest of his extent. The Gold Star families of the 13 U.S. service members killed in the Kabul airport attack get ready to make their voices heard today. I would like to, to express our deepest sympathies and sorrow to the family and co-workers and the personnel. Three people are dead after two helicopters collided while fighting a fire in Riverside County. There's a growing trend in the U.S. We're going to explain what a gray divorce is. And Daniel Ukon, a lost boy from Sudan, shares his story of survival. It's another hot day across San Diego County. An excessive heat warning remains, but temperatures, they're dropping. We're also going to see humidity rise. It is Monday morning, and you're up with CBS 8. And thank you so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. on this Monday. I'm Eric Connor, And I'm Dana Marie McNichol filling in for Netta Arampour. We do want to get right to our top stories this morning. San Diego police right now are trying to figure out will it a driver to lose control of their SUV and crash into a tree. You can see the footage from overnight just before 11 o'clock last night in the Mount Hope area near the intersection of Market Street and Getaway Center. This happened as you can see fire crews had to extricate the driver. It's not clear how serious their injuries are. It's also not clear if alcohol or drugs even played a factor in this crash. So, of course, this is all the information we have at this moment, but we'll update you as soon as we learn more. Also following a developing story out of Riverside County where three people were killed after two firefighting helicopters collided while fighting a fire. This happened yesterday afternoon. Firefighters were battling a 20 acre fire in Cabazon that's just south of the Morongo Casino near the 10 freeway. So many of you know this casino right off the freeway there. One of the helicopters landed safely during the accident. The second helicopter though crashed and all three people on board were killed. The victims include one Cal Fire Division Chief, one Cal Fire Captain and one contract pilot. I would like to to express our deepest sympathies and sorrow to the family and co-workers of the personnel. This was a tragic loss for the community, the fire service community in Cal Fire and Riverside County Fire Department. The crash caused an additional four acre fire, which was later put out. Later this morning, Republican Congressman Daryl Issa will be holding a public hearing on the Kabul airport bombing. This all happened back in August of 2021 during the Afghanistan withdrawal. 13 service members killed. The majority were based out of Camp Pendleton. CBS 8's Chris Grove live outside Escondido City Hall. And that's, Chris, where the Gold Star families of these service members are going to be testifying there. Yeah, they'll be all again speaking publicly for again uh, in this type of form, this congressional form that will be happening here at Escondido, Escondido City Hall. Representative Daryl Issa saying that this is going to be the first of its kind. Now, Representative Daryl Issa has long been critical here of the withdrawal from Afghanistan, notably again uh, because of the loss of those lives and that tragic uh, Kabul airport bombing. Now, immediately after the Pentagon described the 2021 assault as a complex attack, quote, involving multiple explosions and gunfire at and near the Kabul airport, a majority of those killed that day were from the 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment assigned to Camp Pendleton. Now, according to Representative Issa's office, the family members of those killed will quote, testify in public as they still search for the truth and closure for the disastrous withdrawal that cost these men and women their lives. Now, last year on the one year anniversary of the attack, President Joe Biden said in part, quote, today I am praying for the families of those 13 fallen warriors who lost a piece of their soul one year ago. Our nation can never repay such incredible sacrifice, but we will never fail to honor our sacred obligation to the families and survivors they left behind. Now, today's forum expected to start at 10 a.m. It's not clear how many of the families will be represented here, but the public also invited to attend here. Eric and Dana Marie. All right, Chris, thank you for that. This morning, a man is dead after a La Mesa police officer shot and killed him. It happened yesterday afternoon. The shooting happened near a busy street in the parking lot of a condominium complex along University Avenue. Police say he was a wanted felon. The man was tentatively identified as a 41 year old man, but his name has not been released. No one else was injured. San Diego Police Homicide is conducting this investigation. Regarding who fired, what rounds, how many rounds, that's something that, that the investigation is going to need to take place to find more information about that. It is expected that the officer who fired the fatal shot would be identified in the next couple of days, potentially three or four days from now. We'll keep you posted.
And this morning, the warning is lifted for Avenida Lunar in Coronado after a water quality advisory was put into place. There are still ongoing advisories for several beaches around the county, including Shelter Island, La Jolla Cove, and in the Children's Pool. The Imperial Beach Shoreline, Silver Strand, and Shoreline, the main lifeguard tower, and North Beach in Coronado remains under a warning. The ocean shoreline between the international border and the south end of Seacoast Drive remains closed until water sampling confirms that they are safe. Eyes on the horizon. One, two, three, step. Well, today you can join the San Diego Junior Lifeguards and do something that's normally illegal. The Prevent Drowning Foundation of San Diego is hosting another Ocean Beach Pier Jump fundraising event. This video from last month's jump is uh, quite a ways down there, right? This is a 30 year tradition. If you want to take the plunge and are at least 18 years old, you can head to the pier and snag a ticket. Tickets bought at the pier are on a first come first serve basis. All proceeds go toward swimming lessons and scholarships for the junior lifeguards. If you don't want to take the dive, but you want to support, you can do that too. You just can donate on preventdrowningfoundation.org. This all starts at noon. Growing up here in San Diego, so many of my friends were junior lifeguards. Yeah, I just absolutely. never got into it. I think the pier jump scared me. I'm <laughs> deathly afraid of heights. Yeah. It's so a quite I, a drop. I didn't want to go through that whole thing and then have to jump off the pier, but I love cheering on my friends. Yes. I think I I would do it. I don't know if now at like 28 I would do it, <laughs> but I didn't grow up in San Diego, and if I had, I feel like that would have been something I, I would have been down to do. It looks like the uh, they were okay with the water temperature because yeah. it's, it's gone up quite a bit with this heat waves that we've been having here. 70 degrees. Yeah. I mean, it's really not bad out there in the water. Uh, we're continuing to see a possibility of a storm headed our way. So we're going to see the remnants of Tropical Storm Eugene move in our direction. And while many of us not might not be too stoked on, say, a rise in humidity and an increase in the opportunity for rain, we are all going to see a temperature cool down that is going to last through the end of this week. So while the other parts of it that come along might not be the greatest. We can probably celebrate that cool down after what's been weeks on end of excessive heat for the mountains and deserts in particular. So chance for things to kind of balance out toward average, if not slightly cooler than average. Upper 70s this afternoon along the coast, upper 80s inland yet again. 85 for the mountains, 108 for the deserts on average. Cloud cover hugging the coast as we start off your Monday morning here. Limited visibility in many cases, but I want to point out that that excessive heat warning remains for the mount for the deserts actually Ex exclusive to the mountain to the deserts. I should say mountains are still going to be, be pretty warm, but uh, this will last through today at 8 p.m. That pink there on the screen spanning east of us and about northeast east of us as well. So visibility is limited in the Carlsbad and Miramar area in particular. Kearney Mesa has just dropped down to under a mile. Oceanside's at five miles south of Kearney Mesa. We're not running into a lot of difficulty. Remember to, of course, slow your speeds if you're seeing that limited visibility on the highways. Live look outside shows above those clouds. We're off to a beautiful sunrise. That just happened about a minute ago. 607 is that sunrise. Sunset's not coming until 742. Now, while our afternoon conditions are pretty mild for today, 89 for Santee and El Cajon, 73 for PB. Take a look at what your inland temperatures are going to be doing over the next five days. Uh, trough of low pressure moves in. Remnants of Tropical Storm Eugene moves in. Increases our humidity, drops our temperatures by the middle and later portion of this week. We'll dive into deeper detail on this in just a few minutes, but we do want to show you what's going on as far as our border wait times go. Clock is just hitting 609 and right now the San Ysidro port of entry is looking at 175 minute wait. That means you're expected to be in line for up to about three hours, if not longer in some cases. Otay Mesa port of entry about an hour 15 right now. It's Monday morning, so things are pretty busy out there along the border. You can expect that once you get into the US uh, and into San Diego County specifically, cbs8.com slash traffic will have more on what those uh, highway conditions look like. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. Still ahead, attorneys for former President Donald Trump have a deadline later today in the January 6th federal case. We're going to explain why. And some tense moments caught on camera as hundreds of striking hotel workers hit the streets. We'll tell you what they're demanding next.